So the next concept we're going to need to understand the foundations of PCA is the variance covariance matrix. And to understand that, we're going to have a look at a nice, simple data set. So here is my data. I've got one, two, three, four subjects and three variables denoted X, Y, and Z. So let's think about how we calculate the sample covariance. Well, I've written the formula up here. And the covariance of the variables X and Y is going to be 1 over N, where N is our number of subjects, so 4. And what we do is we add over I going from 1 to N, every value of XI minus, remember, X bar is the sample mean. And I've calculated them here for you. We've got the sample mean of the X is 1, the Y is 2.5, and the Z is 1.75. So anyway, we take the xi minus x bar and multiply it by the yi minus y bar. So for example, if I wanted to work out the covariance of x and y, well, let's do the calculation. It would be 1 minus 1 multiplied by 1 minus 2.5. Go down to the next one. 1 minus 1 times by 2 minus 2.5. We do that for every single subject. Add them all up and divide by 4. And if you do that calculation, you should get 0. But we've got other comparisons we could do. We can do x and z and y and z. So x and z, if we do that, I'll give you a second to do the calculation. Again, you should get 0. And y and z, again, a second for you to do the calculation yourself. You should get 1.167. OK. So we're going to get lots and lots of numbers because we're going to keep comparing them. And it'd be nice to put all this together in a single matrix to represent all that relationship data. Well, this is what I've set up. We've got a blank matrix here. And what we do, this is going to be our variance covariance matrix. And so, for example, if you look at here, you've got an X on the row and a Y. So the entry that's going to go here is going to be the covariance of X and Y. Well, we've calculated that, so let's put it in. That is 0. Next one, x and z. x and z, that's going to be 0. And then y and z, we've got this 1.167. But we've still got all the rest of this matrix to calculate. So first of all, let's think about it. Covariance of y, x, that's going to be the entry that's going to go here. It's going to be the second row, first column. So we want the covariance of y and x. But go back to the formula and have a look at that. This is the covariance of x and y. If I wanted y and x, I would swap this bracket and this bracket. But the calculation would be the same. This is what we call a symmetric function. That is, the covariance of x and y is equal to the covariance of y and x. Great. We can now start putting these entries in. You can see that's going to be a 0, that's going to be a 0, and that's going to be a 1.167. And you can sort of see that symmetry. If you had this sort of diagonal, you can see how it reflects, and it's the same. We're still missing these values, though. We've got the diagonal values. What's this? This is going to be the covariance of x and x. So what is the covariance of x and x? Again, go back to the formulae. Imagine now we had our x still, but now we had x again. This would be xi minus x bar, xi minus x bar, or xi minus x bar squared. You should recognize that. That is our definition of our variance. Not quite right, because we've got the n rather than the n minus 1. Doesn't matter. It's still pretty similar. That is that the covariance of x of itself is the variance of x. Go calculate it. If you calculated it, you should have got that this is 0. This one here, this is the covariance of y and y, so it's the variance of y. I'll give you a second, have a go at calculating it yourself. Hopefully you got 1.667. And finally, this last one here, it's the variance of z. Have a go. 0.917. So this is my variance covariance matrix. For each of possible variables, it gives you the covariance between them. And when it's a covariance with itself, that's the variance. It explains the relationships between all these variables. So we're now going to take this, which is my variance covariance matrix, the stuff we learned last time on eigenvalues, eigenvectors, put that together, and we'll have the foundations of PCA. See you next time.